Hello guys, welcome to another live edition of um, our Instagram live. Uh, my name is Nomso Ubiajuru. You know when you see my face and when you see this gentleman sitting beside me, it's time to talk sports. So yes, we have a very special guest today and um, he needs no introduction. He's someone that has done remarkably well for Nigeria football. Um, he's been at uh, two World Cups, won the Nations Cup. He's, he's a legend. He's a legend. He's... he's an extreme honor to have him today on the show. Uh, but before we get to that, let me quickly introduce my colleague here. Um, his name is Baba Jide Oreva. Jide, talk All to All right, guys. People. Good afternoon. To have... Um, we're having a special guest, yes. like, like my Don't colleague Don't spill the beans, yes. You know, to have... Some, he's a legend, even at 27. So you can imagine what we want to have. We're having a special, very special person joining us here today. So, all right, guys, so you can drop your questions and uh, get ready for uh, a beautiful session where we are here to learn, to understand. Um... Yes, our, our special guest is Super Eagles captain Ahmed Musa, and he's going to be joining us very soon. He's, uh, we are connecting with him. So, guys, interactive as possible, drop your comment. Um, ensure that you drop your question. Any question you have, any question at all you need to ask Ahmed Musa, he's going to entertain every question today. Hello, Bob, good, no. evening. good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah. How, how's your day? Yeah, we thank God. Good to have you guys today. Yeah, thank yeah, you very thank much. You, you. So, yeah, the governor, let's start with um, where we stopped yesterday before um, the network had issues. Um, I, I remember asking you that, how did this name, governor, come about? And um, if, do you have any political ambitions after maybe retiring from football? Yeah, like I told you guys yesterday, uh, I think that name start from uh, NDD. NDD start calling me the governor because before the World Cup, he saw some pictures of me and she were sharing food for the less privileged. So he said that it's only the government that, do, that, that does that. So he started calling me that like joke with joke. So everybody, what now the name is everywhere, everybody is calling me the governor. For political something, I don't have anything in mind after football to run for any office, no. Uh, Musa, let's go back. Let's go back to time now. Um, we know you had your debut as a 17-year-old um, with the Super Eagles, which is remarkable. But how did the journey into football start for you? Yeah, the journey was when I started playing in the street. Yeah, you know, football then. No any uh, there is no any parents that want his kid to play football. Only go to school, yeah. go to school, go to school. So I always sneak out to play football, even though when when I get maybe hot, I have to hide myself from my mom so that she will not see it because when she sees she's gonna flog me. So <laughs> that was then. But nowadays you see every everyone wants his son or to yeah. play football because now football is something like a business so everyone wants his son to play football okay so um let's look at your your time in um, um csk moscow week in week out you played in the champions league can you just give us a brief of how was life in um when you were playing with uh, csk moscow with the ukrainian team? yeah life over there is not easy because of the weather it's very very cold but you know, uh, we are we know what we went there to look for, so we have to adopt any situation that we have ourselves. So for me, I think it's a it's a privilege to go uh, to have a transfer from Vivi Velo to CSK Moscow because my first derby with CSK is against Real Madrid in Champions League, and that is a very big game for me. And to play under like Cristiano Ronaldo, Kaka. Casillas, Sergio Ramos, Marcelo is not that easy. So that is why I decided when I just had the offer, I just have to take it. Okay, so um, let's look at your transition to um, the Premier League. We, we, you know, when while at CSK Moscow, you were just dazzling, you, you know. So everybody expected that, okay, as you have come to um, Leicester City, because people in Africa, mostly, especially in Nigeria, we see the Premier League week in, week out, every weekend. So people, um, what was the challenge? Um, what was the real challenge in, in England? Yeah, you know, you can't compare the, the football in Russia and England. So there is two different leagues. And, you know, sometimes, like in life, sometimes you have to have some difficult moments 
So for me, I would say my my journey to England is like a lesson for me. I learn a lot. So so now I have a story to tell my kids, my friend that oh, in life you have to go into difficult moments. So it's not always that you have something that you de- you decide to have straightforward. Sometimes life is up and down. So for me, it's like a lesson that I've learned in Leicester. Okay, um, Musa, let me quickly um, add to that. Um, we know that you played at Leicester, but do you feel you have unfinished business in the Premier League? Like, if there is an opportunity for you to go back to the Premier League, would it? Would you take it? Definitely, I still, I still, I'm, I'm still, I'm still young, so I'm not saying I'm gonna, I'm not gonna go back to England. So if there is any offer, I have to go back. Okay, let's talk about your time now in the Super Eagles. Um, let's talk about the World Cup first. Uh, we know you have played at two World Cup the one in 2014 and the one in 2018. And uh, the remarkable thing is that you scored two goals at each of those World Cup, making you the top scorer for Nigeria at the World Cup. How do you feel about that? And which of those four goals is your best goal? Yeah, for me, I would say I feel very happy. And I think all the four goals, I don't think there is anyone that is not so fantastic or beautiful to say. But I would say... uh, for me, I would say the first goal against Argentina and uh, the first goal against Iceland is something that I can't even believe. I don't even after the game, I watch I watch all the both games to see. I can't even imagine what happened over there. It's like a miracle. For me, I would just say, yeah, Alhamdulillah for those two goals because I can't even say. I was ready to play that. You know, football sometimes, if you if you want to score, it's going to come no matter how. Yes. Um, okay. I remember that that one against Argentina. I remember then I was on the road. So I only had goal everywhere in the whole of um, central area in Abuja. So I had to park somewhere and um, I saw the highlights on the TV. How does this feel? Like I'm trying to put myself in your position to make the whole nation scream at the top of their voice. How does this feel to you personally? Yeah, for me, I think after that game against Iceland, when we go back to the hotel, going to on social media to see all over the country, everybody's talking about Musa and everybody's talking about that game. For me, it's like I was even crying when I'm in the room because Cheryl was saying, what, why are you crying? I say, oh, it's not that easy to see, to make almost all the whole country happy. So for me, it's not that easy for me after that game. I will tell you, I really, really feel that game because when I go back and call my mom, my mom was just telling me her phone. She have to put her phone on the charge because too much call from everyone saying congratulations after that game. Okay, so tell us, how was the mood in camp after that defeat against Argentina at the last World Cup? I think uh, after the game, we all the players we stay on the pitch for like six to seven minutes because we can't even believe it that that last minute goal like in in brazil the same thing happened they scored a nine minute goal before the end of the game and this one too we are just looking for just draw and the referee contribute for our own losing but you know that is football we don't have to keep on saying all that that is past so we have to look for the future now Okay, okay uh, Musa, let's talk about your uh, your special moment, which is the AFCON 2013, which you won um, under Stephen Keshi. Um, tell us, how did you feel winning the Nations Cup at a very young age? And um, f- um, years after, we saw um, Nigeria lose to Algeria with a last-minute goal again at the last Nations Cup. So, the difference, how, did you, how was the joy for you in 2013 and Hello. how... How was it for you 20, in 2019 when we lost against Algeria? Yeah, in 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 South Africa when we won that nation cup. I think it was we are all just going out to give all we have because we ourselves we believe in ourselves that we're gonna do something. We don't know that we're gonna win the trophy, but we have that belief that we're gonna reach somewhere after the game that we won against Africa. Coast, I think in the quarterfinal. So yeah. and and in in Egypt, you know, most of the boys 
that is our first time to go into the tournament. It's only me, Mikel Obi, Kenneth Omero, only three of us that won the AFCON then. So it's like a good step for us finishing the yeah. third position. So now, as you can see, we have we have another tournament next year. I'm not sure if, it, if the tournament is going to hold, but we have that experience now with the couple of players that we have. So I think the next tournament will be a wonderful one for us. Okay. Okay, let's still stick with the Super Eagles. I remember when we were um, asked in Yama about the present crop of players in the Nigerian team now. He, he, according to him, he feels the team that you are captaining will likely do well, even than the golden generation of the Yekines and the Amokachi. What do you see in the new team that we have um, for Nigerians? So for me, I think, yeah, I, as you can see, we have a lot of talent in the team, young players, 21, 22, 23. So if we stick together and then give all we have that we are doing in our own club side, I think in the next tournament, I don't think we're going to lose any game because we have been together since after the World Cup. Just few players coming into the team, playing qualifiers and qualify to the Nation Cup, being together. I think now, I think we have a very good team. Okay. Um, Ahmed Musa, let's... Um... Talk about that more again, because Ayama was full of praise for you when we had the interview with him some weeks back. And uh, there is this record that you're chasing. You have 91 caps for Nigeria, and you're this close. Okay, yes, you have like 10 games to equal Ayama's record. So Ayama said he's rooting for you to be Nigeria's most capped player. How do you feel you, you are going to achieve this? And if you eventually achieve this record, how would you feel about it? Inshallah, I think that would be one of my greatest honor to 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 be that record. It's not that easy to to play that a lot of cup and being the number one in the in in the in the country. So for me, I'm getting ready to be that uh, record, and Inshallah, I'm gonna do that. Okay, okay. Also, um, let's still talk about records. Your Nigeria's um, record goal scorer at the, the um, World Cup finals with four goals. Um, I, for Africa, it's Asama Jan and um, I think it's uh, Roger, Roger Miller. Miller. There are just five goals. And now you have a very good chance because you're just 27. Going to another World Cup, there's a very good chance for you to also become Africa's record scorer at the and World Cup finals. Some of these achievements are almost unbelievable because I don't think in a while people will be able to break it. Is this also a dream chase for you? Yeah, for me, it's a very big dream for me. And inshallah, if we are still alive and if we qualify to the World Cup, inshallah, I'm, if I'm lucky to be one of the players going there, inshallah, I don't know what God have, but we just keep on praying to keep us alive and then we qualify to the, to the World Cup and then we see what next because no one knows what is going to happen tomorrow. Maybe before then, you'll be in the squad qualifying the World Cup, but something can happen, get injured or something happened. So you just we just keep on praying till that date. Okay. Okay. All right, Musa. Um, this is something that has been on on the internet for a while. We we know you made your debut at a very young age, but some players have come out to say that before they were for, uh, made to come into the team or before they would go to a tournament like the World Cup, they were told to pay a sum of money to go to the World Cup. Did you at any point experience anything of such during your time? Yeah, I've, I've been seeing all that on internet. We all know how the country is, but for me, I've never, never seen that since I've started from under 20 to the Super Eagles. I've worked under many coaches, but I've never, for me, I don't know for them, but for me, I've never seen that. Okay. And there's no um, any coach, there's no any coach or anybody that asks me for money to pay money. Maybe before he can put me in the game for me, no. Okay. Okay. Um. Again, Ayama told us that um, we he had um, like his exit from the Super Eagles is something he regrets, and we know that. Um, based on circumstances, he had to retire from the Super Eagles. But again, we would like to find out, when um, Ayama was stripped off his captaincy and you were handed captain handband under Coach Sunday Ulisse, what was um, the mood in camp? 
did people accept this decision? No, you know uh, what happened. I think nobody. No, we are not even. We are even shocked to hear that. But you know, there is football. But for me, I think it's a very sad moment for us that day because we are all in the camp, and then me, uh, Mikel Obi, Echejile, uh, Eminike, we have to go to Sunday Lusa to say, please forgive him. We are very sorry. But you know, everyone have his own mind, so I don't know what going on them but you know that is football and even till now i think we still miss him in the team okay so um musa let's let's talk about you your personality now let um you've played um in the world cup you've played against um the kakas the Messi, the ronaldo's i think it, it, um, among all the nigerian players you are the, among the very few that has played against ronaldo and that has also played against Messi. What's football at that level like? We are asking for Nigerians that are watching. What's football at that level like? Yeah, football at that level, I think, is one of the biggest moments for any footballer. If you, if, if you want to achieve more, you want to play against the superstars. So for me, I think every footballer wants to play in that very high uh, moment and very high quality. So for me, I think Playing against all those players is one of my biggest happiness. Now that you've raised happiness, let, let's quickly ask you this. What would you say has been your biggest achievement as a footballer? Then what would you say has been your biggest regret as a footballer? Yeah, for me, my biggest achievement in football is football make me what I am today. So that is one of my biggest achievements. So, and I've never, I don't have anything to say that. I'm regretting in football. No. What, okay, what about that Algeria loss? That free kick that just shattered the dreams of everybody. Is that not... A, you didn't feel bad? Yeah, yeah. In, in football, definitely, you know that you have to lose or win. But in that kind of diamond, it is something that we are not expecting that. But we are sportsmen, we have to take it like that because... There is nothing we can do. We cannot change it. Okay, uh, Musa, I think I remember asking um, uh, pa uh, Pascal Patrick, who is the fastest player in the Super Eagles right now? And he said it's either you or Henry Oyekuru. So for you, please, are you faster than Henry Oyekuru? And do you feel you're the fastest yeah. player in the Super Eagles? In Super Eagles, we have uh, Daddy Moses. We have Harry. We have a lot of some quick players, but we have never tried to say that. Let's try who is the faster player. So for me, I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm the faster player until we we have a, a, a maybe a test to see.